All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today I'm really excited to be working on this project. So today we're going to be building a bandsaw table for this machine, very similar to this one offered by Swag Off-Road. This was $169. Now today we're going to be building one for my machine, uh, this piece of eighth inch steel, which I picked up for just $8. So let's get to work. So to get started, this is the unit that we're using. This is a machine made by Wynn. It is, I think, a pretty nice machine. It has an LED light on the inside of it to watch where your cutting surface is, and it seemed to do a pretty good job. Additionally, here is the mounting plate. I'm going to use this to mount the actual base of the cutting table. Now let's move on to the piece of metal. All right, so this is a piece of eighth inch steel. It is 33 and a half inches long by 19 and a half inches wide. Now I picked this up from my local steel shop. It was sitting on the floor as is. Now by doing that, you get to pay the drop rate. So it's drop steel. So I picked this piece of steel up for just $8 with no cuts made. Being this is the material I have to work with, I come up with a cardboard template. So let's show you how that lines up on here. So as you can see, the, the template that I came up with is going to be using the entire sheet of this steel. It's also galvanized to help me with durability, and luckily, I don't have to paint it. So to give you a better idea how this is supposed to come together, I'm going to have three sides with legs. There's going to be on the four corners, feet bent in on the sides. And of course, I've added provisions for some dimple dies just to give a little bit of personality. And on the top section here, that's the relief for the machine to fit in. Of course, the groove for the belt to go through. And we're still going to have to come up with provisions to mount the thing to the table. Now we're going to transfer this template over to the steel. Now we're going to transfer over all the center marks for the holes I want to drill. Now we're going to cut this out with a cutoff wheel and we all know we can't wrap a cutoff wheel around this radius here. So we're going to have to go to all these round edges and we're going to just cut these with just a corner of this. I don't feel like going all the way through the whole material so we're going to leave it at a bit of an angle. We're going to cut this radius out and to find the center of it we just mark the inside of this hole saw and it's much easier to find the center of the hole saw. So there you go, just enough to get me around the corners for the cut. So now we can start cutting this material out. Here it is all cut out. So now it's time for the unnecessary job of drilling these perimeter holes I'd set up all the way around to make provisions to put the dimple dies in just for some texture. Okay, so I finally got all these holes drilled. Now we're gonna come in here with this dimple die. This is an inch and a quarter dimple die. You can see it's gonna press that pattern in there. So we're just gonna bring this over to the press now and dimple die up all these holes.
All right, dimple dies are all done to come out good. Just just in case anyone was wondering, I got these dimple dies from LateStrange.net. They're made out of a really high quality chrome alley, and they've been working out just wonderfully. All right, so now that we got all that work done, it is time to move on to the press brake. So this is a press brake that I made maybe a few videos back now, and we're gonna use this to make a brake 90 degree bend here, here and here for our three sides. Additionally, we're gonna make some on this lower edge where I have this one and a quarter inch foot that I've left space for. So we're gonna get this in the press brake and we'll make those bends now. All right, we got the base piece all bent to shape. I did add a few tack welds just in this corner here and here on both sides just to keep this from kind of vibrating. So now it's time to mount the saw itself to the tabletop. All right, all these saws basically have a base plate affixed to the saw itself. Now they do vary with how they do bolt and the bolt pattern itself. However, this is just a two bolt pattern. So we're gonna remove this base plate and we're going to transfer these mounting holes over to the base we just made. Here's how that base plate correlates to the top of this saw bench. So we're just going to transfer those holes over and drill them out now. Alright, so we need to countersink these holes as you can see there, it's the only way to make those uh, Allen hoods flush. So I'm going to be using this drill bit, which as you can see fits right in there and should flush those out perfectly. Alright, so we got them drilled out. Now let's check our work. Alright, looks pretty good. Now we can mount the saw. All right, here it is mounted from the other side, and we're no longer needing this original base plate. It is now completely bolted to the bandsaw stand that we made. However, the one thing I'm realizing now that I have it together is there's a bit of deflection, as you can see right there where this main cut is to allow access for the band to go through. So we're gonna come up with a real quick bracket. We're gonna bend from here. There's a mounting pot spot for this motor assembly up, and then we're gonna weld it to the bottom of this thing, and it should make good work of that. This thing is looking good, however, there's one thing, if I'm pushing material through here, I don't want it sliding on the table, so we're going to come up with a quick, easy solution. So for a quick solution, we're going to be using these magnetic feet. They have bolt holes in them, so they're also countersunk, so we can mount this right to the bottom of this thing, and then it'll stick right to the table. So it looks good. Let's see how it works. All right, so this bandsaw model has a speed indicator right here. You can turn it from the slowest up to the fastest, up to, up to six. But for cutting metal, we're going to want the low speed. We'll keep it on one. And we're going to use this clamp to keep this going for us while we run our metal material through. I went through that aluminum like no problem at all, so now we're going to go through this three piece of 3 16th mild steel. Our 
right, so here it is. For just eight bucks and some time in the garage, this thing turned out great. It looks good, it works well, and I'm very happy with it. This thing's going to do a lot of help with me in the garage in the future. So with that being said, I guess I should get back to working on cars again. Alright, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.